Ugh. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about something that is definitely the worst part, hence the video title. Worst part about Kickstarter, Indiegogo, crowdfunding in general, product design, entrepreneurship, running a business, all of it. The worst part is the waiting. Oh, and also, look where I am. So the waiting really can begin, my hair's a mess up here. So the waiting really can begin when you come out with an idea, when you're waiting for quotes back. Oh, hang on. RAF training jet. Kind of a good way to ruin audio. Cheers, Aria. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The waiting really begins well, as soon as you come up with an idea and decide to pull the trigger and to make those first steps into running a business, launching a Kickstarter campaign. Something you have to come to terms with. Come to terms with pretty early on. Figure out some ways to keep your mind engaged and your body engaged and keep busy because waiting and rinsing Netflixes is not fun. Because the reality of it, and especially for Kickstarter, is you're only really busy 10% of the time. From the point of having an idea to reviews from your customers, over that entire period of you know, development, prototyping, testing, um, all your marketing materials, the campaign itself, running the campaign, answering those questions, reaching out to media, production, fulfillment, manufacture, everything like that, of that entire period of time, I would guess, in my experience, probably 10 to 15% of that time you're busy. The rest of it is you're waiting. You're waiting on people to get back to you with quotes. You're waiting, waiting for feedback. You're waiting for, you're waiting for your video software to export, export what you've made. You're waiting for SD cards to finish transferring. You're waiting for, you're waiting. That's the thing. You're waiting for backers. You're waiting for questions, answers, feedback, everything. Um, and if you're bad at waiting, if in your heart you know that you are, you cannot deal with waiting a second for anything, and it might not be for you, um, but there are things you can do. There are things that I've picked up. There are, sorry about the wind, I'm on a mountain. Um, there are things you can do, the stuff that, um, obviously, YouTube is great for you. You can learn and pass the time, but there's an awful lot of things you can do, and I'm going to cover a couple of my favourite ones. Uh, now, also, enjoy this. Okay, so one thing, and this is super obvious, and you're going to be like, oh, duh, but you need to pick a winner. Pick a project that is going to pay out for you. It's going to be worthwhile. You're going to enjoy it for the long run. It's a problem. It's what I did. It's a project that solves a problem you're having because you're somewhat invested in it, um, and you want it to succeed because it's going to help you out. And then after that, you need to do your research, check that other people actually want this product, they like your idea for it. You know, do these things before you go throwing a ton of money into it, because there's nothing worse than putting a ton of money into a project and it either fizzling out because you've burnt out, or it just goes nowhere because it already existed and you just didn't know about it. So pick a winner and that's going to really help with the waiting times because you know it's going to be worthwhile. It's so starting to get quite cold. It's very windy. I don't know how high we are, probably not very high, but the view's good. And just to clarify on that last point, picking a winner, it's not just about a project that's going to make you money. It has to be a project that you're passionate about from the go. Because if you start a project, you're a bit, mm, I don't know, I'll give it a go. Chance that you're not going to see it through. And it's not reflection on you, it's just how it is. If we have a long period between starting something and finishing it, there's a, that dip in the middle kills it because you lose your momentum, lose your enthusiasm. And the project is then dead stick. So pick something from the get-go that you are pumped on, that you really want to see done. Okay, and the next point is, if you're a creative person, chances are you've got more than one idea. So there's nothing wrong with, while you're working on one project and you're waiting for materials to arrive or answer from a supplier, or you know, if you've got a friend helping you out with the video and photo stuff. If you're waiting for that to be done, there's nothing wrong with starting something else or flicking over to another project. You can juggle more than one thing at once. I mean, I remember, I remember a game I used to play on the computer called Tonka. I think it was Tonka Trucks as a kid. And a quote in that said, finish one job before you start another. And for many areas of life, that applies and that's important. But I find that these sort of creative fields and things, if you only do one thing, if you focus on one project at a time, for me at least, the waiting just kills it. I, I, I burn out or 
I overthink it or nothing actually gets done. So if I'm juggling one or two projects, working with a friend on a collaboration, got my own main, main project and maybe a small fun one, that really helps me keep inspired and keep busy and fill in those gaps. So if you're doing say two or three projects and they're all waiting, there's gonna be some overlap and there's gonna be some busy on this one, waiting on that one. And the problem with that is if you're waiting on all three projects, that's the absolute worst it can be. And then Netflix or doing this is kind of your only option. Um, but yeah, check this place out. This is Helvellyn in the Lake District and it's beautiful, it's awesome here, so. I was using that as a tripod rather than my actual tripod. Let's go over here. Oh, I'll stop him on the edge. So that is really the reason for me being here. Um, the ultimate lens at the moment is in production. Um, by the time you're seeing this, batch one units are not only complete, but they're also going to be on their way. So if you're a backer and you're batch one or your early bird, your lenses are on the way a little bit earlier than planned. But I'm here in the Lake District, um, basically filling time. It was maybe a six, seven hour drive from my home, brought my friend with me. Um, and we only drove up, it was what, 50, 60 quid in fuel. It's worth doing it just to fill that time in. Uh, we're here for a few days um, because of you know, the waiting side of it. There's only so much you can do in your office in terms of like packaging design and stuff for down the line. But here in the right now, um, batch one early birds are on the way and I'm here to fill in the time before letting you guys know. So, uh, yeah. That's not a bad view, is it? Worth it, the half hour and a half walk to the top. Okay, so that pretty much wraps this one up. I hope that doesn't put you off. If you're a first time Kickstarter creator or you're planning your first campaign, because it is sales worn, there's a lot of waiting involved. I'm sure you already know at this stage, but don't let that put you off. Kickstarter or entrepreneurship, starting your own business, definitely worth doing, but now you've been warned, there's a lot of waiting involved. My name is Josh. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and like the video. Or comment below if you have any tips or tricks for keeping yourselves motivated on those slow days. Take it easy.